In this video, we'll be looking at the application component of photons, uh, which is the use of x-rays in medicine. The following are learning outcomes as required by SACE. X-rays consist of photons of very high frequency and energy. So due to their energy, um, they are able to penetrate matter to varying degrees. Now, when an x-ray is incident on a specific photographic plate or photographic paper, uh, they react with the film and expose it. So this produces an image on the film. Now, their ability to penetrate the matter and to produce an image uh, make them useful in medicine. Now, x-rays cannot be focused with a lens like a visible light because refraction is required to do this and x-rays uh, do not uh, refract with lenses. So what happens is uh, x-rays uh, pass through a body um, and land on a photographic paper or photographic plate on the other side. Um, and this plate is only sensitive to x-rays which produce the image. As the x-rays pass through the body, they are absorbed by different body tissue to varying degrees. Now the intensity of the radiation that falls onto the photosensitive plate varies because of this and produces an image. The image produced by the x-rays is dependent on multiple factors which we'll focus on three. Now they are uh, the degree of absorption by the different uh, tissues in the body, uh, the penetrating power of the x-rays and also the length of exposure. Looking at the first factor, different types of body tissue absorb x-rays to different extents. Now the degree of exposure of the photographic plate indicates the type of tissue that the x-rays were absorbed by. Now there are three factors that affect the attenuation or the absorption of x-rays and they are the density of the tissue, the thickness of the tissue, and the atomic number of the elements that make it up. So density is one factor that affects the attenuation of x-rays in the body. So the denser the material, the greater the attenuation or absorption of an x-ray. So for example, uh, a bone attenuates to a much greater extent than muscle, meaning the photographic plate is exposed more where there's muscle rather than bone. Um, metal pins, also, uh, if you have them in your body, they are much denser than bone, therefore the exposure on the plate is uh, much higher. The thickness of the tissue uh, also affects the attenuation of the x-rays. So if there's a large bone along with some fingers, for example, the large bone would stand out more uh, as it attenuates the x-rays more. Now the third factor that affects attenuation in your body is the atomic number of elements of the tissue. So the greater the atomic number, um, the greater the attenuation, uh, because the greater the atomic number, the more particles in the nucleus of the atom. So a lot of the body, a lot of parts of the body are comprised mainly of uh, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen with low atomic numbers. Uh, if you have any metal parts in your body, they have a high uh, atomic number, so they attenuate more of the x-rays and stand out more on the uh, film. So we talked about um, the absorption of x-rays by the tissue as our first factor affecting the image produced. Now our second factor is the penetrating power. So to be able to produce an image, x-rays must penetrate the tissue and the greater the energy the x-rays have, the further into the tissue they get, they get uh, before they're absorbed. So x-rays are often described in terms of their hardness. Now a hard x-ray uh, has a high penetrating power and it goes further into the tissue uh, before it's absorbed. And the penetrating power uh, is in the order of 100 to 150 kilovolts. Uh, soft x-rays though um, are in the order of 50 kilovolts. Now when we talk about the kilovolts there, that's the operating voltage of the tube. So that's the potential energy that's across um, the tube. Now when we select x-rays, um, we usually select hard x-rays to penetrate uh, bone because bone is a very dense material. Um, whereas we use soft x-rays to penetrate um, muscle to get a better image. Now the third factor that affects the quality of the image is exposure time. Now we have to be exposed to, to x-rays to produce an image, but if we're exposed for too great of a time, uh, damage may occur. Now technicians that are working with x-rays, they usually uh, use preventative equipment to stop their exposure being too great. So for example, they might wear a, a shielded apron or they may leave the room. Uh, this minimizes their exposure. Now the degree of exposure uh, depends on the hardness of the x-rays 
um, meaning the harder the x-ray or the greater the voltage is, the more energy it has, the greater the potential to cause damage. Um, the intensity of the x-rays, so the greater the intensity, the greater the number of photons uh, that you're exposed to. Um, this is actually related to the filament current of the x-ray tube. Um, and then also obviously the time of exposure. So if you're exposed for a very long time, it's more likely to cause damage. So when performing an x-ray, um, there are three things that you can change, three settings that you can change. So they are the x-ray tube voltage, the filament current, and the exposure time. Now when performing an x-ray, um, you perform them in the following order to produce the best image. So first, um, you determine what type of tissue that you're going to test, and you set the x-ray tube voltage, uh, or the hardness of the x-ray, uh, to meet those requirements. Then you select the exposure time, and this determines the clarity and sharpness of the image. And thirdly, uh, you select the filament current, which relates to the intensity of the x-rays. And this is used to produce a contrasting image that uh, includes all important information.